All right, hi, everybody. Um, hi. We're going to talk about university responses to sexual assault today. Um, I'm your anchor, I guess, Chris. <laughs> People, I think, sometimes have trouble drawing, connecting the dots between talking about sex and preventing sexual assault. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, talking about consent, you know, like the idea of if you're not even aware of what consent is, like how can you really negotiate a discussion about sexual assault? You need to talk about this. You need to negotiate, figure out where each other's boundaries are. You need to know that at any point, one or both of you can say, no, I don't want to do this right now. Um, so it's really also about getting, taking that socialization of boys and girls and breaking down that um, that ideology because it's very insidious and it leads to a lot of um, acquaintance sexual assault. Yeah. The entitlement is going hand in hand with this rape culture victim blaming ideology and if you're blaming someone for getting like cat called on the street that's gonna completely slide into blaming someone for being sexually assaulted or raped. You don't want to think that another person could do something so horrible right. so you have to, you think, okay, well, what's the exception to this? Why did they do this? Exactly. And so it's easier for people to blame the victim um, when in reality, people do sexually assault other people. Um, so do we want to talk a little bit about how the vagina monologues fits into that larger scheme? I mean, because it's been popular on campuses for a long time, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it is sex positive and it, it is, trying to be more inclusive. It hasn't always been an inclusive show mm -hmm. in the past, but there's definitely been changes being made. But it also just kind of brutally and unapologetically gives a space for women to tell their stories. And, and people have conversations outside of the show, right. and, and, and they have instilled in them the confidence to tell their story finally. And there's a part, I don't know if Loyola does this too, but during DePaul's show, we have a moment where we ask, um, if you identify as, as, as a survivor of sexual violence, like, please stand. And then if you know someone who is a survivor, please stand and then please stand if you're committed to ending sexual violence. And so it's kind of this beautiful solidarity moment where you're able just to not only see maybe friends who have not come out to you as being a survivor stand up, but also know that you're standing with them in solidarity just like to support that. I remember I was in it my freshman year and then now I'm the producer and I remember being so moved and Originally, I was a little uncomfortable um, because that's kind of what it's supposed to have you do Absolutely. is to be a little uncomfortable. Yes. Um, but there are funny stories and then there are stories that are really, really um, hard, hard to hear. And uh, it just creates a very safe space. That suddenly has like a vague sense of the scope of the problem and they want to do something, but they're like, I'm not an activist. Right? Right. What, are, what are things that the hypothetical you know, quote unquote average student can do to start getting involved in sexual assault response? Even if you don't consider yourself an activist, if you want to get involved in a social movement or change things, you are an activist. And so doing things like, at DePaul especially, coming to the Women's Center, asking what opportunities there are. Um, we always have a lot of great programs where we have speakers come. Um, you can come and just talk to us during the day, like we're a safe space. You know, there's lots of different things where you don't necessarily have to take the time to plan something, but you can be part of the movement as well. And I think that participating is just as important. We have we have this thing the Women's Center does where we encourage people to like take a sign that has like a a statement on it. So one was like, you know, cat calling is on the compliment, and one said, if you know a survivor of sexual assault, like, please listen to them. Their stories need to be heard. And carrying that on the CTA, and then carrying that to class, and then seeing what that can, what that can spur. And so one of um, one of the people who comes to the women's center, um, they carried a, a sign on the train and like watched people have conversations about cat calling in front of them, about what, how it's affected them, and how it's affected their, you know, their friends, and then just realizing that that's a problem too, like that's a form of activism. Definitely increasing um, your own self-awareness and uh, if somebody comes to you that uh, is sharing their story of sexual assault, actually listen to them yeah. yes. and say, you know, I believe you and I'm here for you. Also, if you want to be involved on campus, I know I've had a really easy time of just emailing the Title IX coordinator at Loyola and being like, hey, like I, I really want to know more about what you do and they love they love to talk to students. Um, health educators love to talk to students that are interested. I'm based out of the Gannon Center for Women in Leadership. So yeah, it's basically an outlet for feminists to come together and talk about how we can make the campus community and the Chicago community a safer place for women. So yeah, 
It's, it's something that has definitely shaped my college career in a way that I couldn't imagine 